Hello, welcome to Classical Greek Latin. My name is Josh. I am the teacher for this course. This is Greek lesson number nine, and it corresponds to chapter seven in your Crosby and Schaefer book. This lesson is a continuation on the alpha stem declension uh, for feminine nouns and, and adjectives in the feminine form. This is a very short, simple lesson. Um, basically, the only thing here, so we know the regular declension with the eta form that you're familiar with hitherto compared with this, I wouldn't call it a new form, but just the alpha ending when an epsilon yota rho is present. <clears throat> so let me, let's just decline the endings here real quick. All right, so we got our nominative, genitive, dative, and accusative. I'm not going to write out the vocative because it's so infrequent. So the sing we'll do the plural also, but the singular is really the only thing that is different here. So let me write out first what you are familiar with. Now these are just the case endings. The the letter letters that are put on the end of the root of a word to change its function in the sentence in the grammar. <clears throat> All right, so you have eta. Now remember, eta is long by nature. You, like you have an omicron, short by nature. Omega, long by nature. Eta is really the long. You could call it the long version of alpha. Right. So this is what we've learned already. You have eta sigma ace for the genitive, and you have Eta with a subscript iota for the dative a, and then you have bang, right? And that's for the accusative. And so our accents here, I'm gonna put acutes here. Typically these will have grobs on them because typically they are they are followed by another word, and so you have a grob in that instance if the accent falls on the last on this last syllable. You have circumflex over the genitive and the dative. And then you have an acute or grav on the accusative. <clears throat> all right. So now all all that we're learning here is that when you have epsilon, iota, or rho coming immediately before the case ending, that is epsilon, iota, or rho is the last letter of the word at hand. In the singular, this eta is gonna become alpha, okay? And all these alphas, even though alpha is short by nature, all these alphas are going to be long, okay? So that's important to remember when considering accents. All right, so we have eta is becomes alpha, eta sigma becomes alpha sigma, and again, circumflex there. We don't need a long mark over a vowel that we put a circumflex over because the circumflex tells us that it's long. And then we have alpha subscript iota with a circumflex over it. And then we have alpha nu. Now typically you would not expect a vowel to be long before nu, but it is in this case. All right, yeah, no pun intended. So there you go. So these endings are always gonna be long. All these alphas are gonna be long, even though alpha is short by nature. Eta is long by nature, right? We expect that that is long. But all these have either circumflex to tell us it's long or a macron line to tell us it's long. All right, so that's the only difference. Let's do the plural just for fun. The plural does not change at all. So you have your nominative is going to be I, right? And then you have, okay, we'll just, we'll just put accents here, pretending that the accent is on the end. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not with nouns and adjectives, right? With the on, that doesn't change. Circumflex over the on, right? And then ice. Circumflex over ice, all right? And then us, 
os is also long, just like so. All right, so this, the plural, that's exactly the same. That does not change, regardless of if there's an epsilon, yota, or rho beginning or coming before it or not. It's, all gonna, it's always going to look like this. Accents may vary a little bit, but the endings are always going to be spelled like as such. The singular, to be redundant, changes from eta to alpha when preceded by epsilon, yota, or rho. All right? So the only thing that you're really learning here is the singular. All right? So with that in mind, let's take a look at some vocab and look at some quick, easy examples. So we have agora, right? So we don't have an eta there. We have an alpha because it's preceded by either an epsilon, yota, or in this case, rho. So it has agora, not agare, agora because of that rho, right? It's still feminine declension though, right? And then you have arche here. Now you do have an eta there because this chi is not an epsilon, yota, or rho. So we have eta. Okay, but in the plural, for example, would be archai with this ending here in the plural. Okay, so let's look at another one here. Filia, you have an yota, epsilon, yota, or rho. So we have a yota there, so it's alpha. Okay, all right, let's take a look here. Let's decline some of these real quick together. All right, so they want us to inflect hey filia chora and then inflect micros and axios okay so i'm going to do hey filia chora for you uh, for two reasons one because there's a funny part in here that you've already seen before but i want to refresh your memory on it and then secondly Axios is in the back of the book where you can you can check your own work and uh, micros um, They want you to do it in all genders But yeah, they've already given the example here in the feminine Nothing weird there with the accent. So I'm gonna let you do micros and axios on your own But let's let's uh, decline or inflect Hephilia chora. We'll do that together <clears throat> All right, so we are doing hey, philia, chora. Okay, so this is nominative, right? We have the definite article kit definite article here. This is the friendly country. Okay. Um, these are from your vocab for this chapter. So the friendly country. So let's just go through and decline this. So we will let's do our singular first. So, so we'll have nominative, genitive, dative, and accusative. Okay. All right. So let's see here. All right, so we have we have we have the nominative singular here, so we'll just write it out again as they've given it to us from the dictionary entry, if you will. Okay. All right. Now this accent here stays acute because even though there's another word following it, because this accent is not on the last letter of the word. If it were on the last letter of the word, then it would be a comma grave, if you're wondering about that. But that's why that is acute, all right? And same thing here, okay? And there's there's no more words following. All right, so let's let's go on here. So we have now face, okay? Feely. Us. Okay. 
Now what I've done here is I've marked this as a long alpha, which it is, okay? And we know that because it would not be able to take a circumflex if it were not long, okay? So we know it's long, but we don't have a circumflex here because the accent is persistent that on a noun or adjective it's going to try and stay where it was originally so long it stay, as it stays within the three more rule, right? So we have two more here under the long alpha, one, two, and then one under the iota. So we're still within the three. So two and one is three, right? And then our circumflex is always on the definite article like this over here, taste, right? So this is correct here. And let's go on in with koras. All right, so we're going to do koras. Okay. And again, we have the same story here. Two more under the long alpha there, one or two under the omega, but we're just going to keep the accent there and accent the latter half, if you will, of that omega to stay within that three more rule. All right, so there we go. Tes filias, joras. Okay, let's do dative, circumflex over the dative. Let's see here, almost wrote an eta, so fili a, okay. Same thing there, long, long vowel there with that subscript. Accent's gonna stay there because it can because of the three more day rule, all right. Okay, all right. And now let's do our accusative, all right. Now note, I put the grav there because we have a word following it. All right. And I guess I'll put a long mark over that alpha subscript yoda just to be redundant there, but all long alphas. All right. So there is our singular. Now let's do our plural. Go ahead and let's just put all of our definite articles in first. <clears throat> all right. So that's that's just repeat stuff, right? We already know. Or definite articles, all right? And now these endings are gonna be the same that we've been used to, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So we wanna say the friendly countries. So we're gonna say, really I. <clears throat> Alpha yota on the end of a word is considered short. So one more there, one more under the yota. We're within the three more rules, so that accent accent can stay there. Okay, now we have Chora, or Chorai rather, excuse me. Okay, same thing there. All right, now this is where it gets a little interesting. So we have, we're going to have Fili On. Okay, so this is where the one place where it gets a little funny. So we're gonna put the circumflex there over the omega, and you may remember this from last chapter, um, but let's go ahead and write this out as it, out as it will be. And then we're gonna have colon with the circumflex there. Okay, so if you remember, going back to last lesson, so this is page, let's see, page 15 here, right, and we were looking at uh, kome, right, and remember, kome puts a circumflex over the omega when you expect 
just to have an acute remaining over the um, penult, if you remember this, okay? And remember, the reason for that is because the genitive used to look like this, ason. So let me kind of spell that out a little more for you. So let's take the word um, chora, all right? So if we have the root of the word is chor, all right? And then we're gonna add on, let's say, ason, okay? The accent originally is here, right? Because that's how it appears in the dictionary, okay? So with chora, that's fine because we have even a long alpha there, two more there, two under the omega, and we're gonna emphasize the, the second more there and get within that three more rule, right? So with here, what's happening is you have the omega, two more there, the alpha has a more, so that's three right there. So that accent is gonna to wanna to squeeze over there, so it's gonna move over there to that alpha and the history of Greek evolution. But then when that alpha combines with this omega, it's going to become a circumflex over that omega. Okay? And then we're and then we're left with a word that looks like that, which is what we have here. All right? And we had the same thing happen with uh, the philia. Right? Okay? So that's that's the one weird part that's why I did this particular declension with you. All right, so let's go on here. So we have Thais, Philly Ice. Okay. Sigma on the end prevents that from being short, like it was short here. It's long, okay, but it doesn't change the accent at all. And then we have Chorai, or excuse me, Chorais. All right, and then we have tas, filias, long alpha, filias, choras. All right, so that is a filia, chora, the friendly country, declined for you. But that was the one, the one thing that was kind of weird. I wanted to point that out to you. All right, so let's go on. So go ahead and if you want to write that out yourself, that it wouldn't hurt, probably help you. Uh, let's get to the right chapter. Here we go. All right, but yeah, go ahead and write out decline micros and axios. Those are both in all genders, right? Those are both. Um, Adjectives, so they're going to be declined in both the masculine, feminine, and neutered. And you can find those in paragraphs, paragraph uh, 510 in the back. So here we have paragraph 36, 37. So if you keep flipping the pages, going right, you'll eventually get to 510 in the back. And you can check your work there. But I would not copy it out. Um, do it from memory, even if it's very little from memory, and then check your work. All right, so let's look at paragraph 37 here. We have accusative of extent. And you know I don't like these technical terms, but let's take a look and see what it means. The accusative denotes extent of space or duration of time. All right, so let's see here. So, the oxe tus polemius Deca stadius, all right? So the accusative just really confines the movement, the verb, and provide, provides its purpose. Um, so here we have, he will pursue, okay, so we got a, a future tense here. So he will pursue the direct object Right, which is an accusative, right? He the the pursuit stops on the direct object, if you will, right? But then you have the um, I was wondering why they put ten days. I was looking at stadius. 
they're referring to Hemeras. Okay, so they have space or time, both examples here. Okay, so he will pursue the enemy, the enemies, the hateful ones, right, the haters, for 10 states, right? And so notice that states here is in the accusative, right? This is accusative plural, uh, masculine. And you have the word deca, 10. Now, 10 is not declinable, so it's always going to be deca, uh, delta, epsilon, kappa, alpha, like that. Um, so 10, stadius, those, those are accusative, right? Stadius is accusative, and deca is going to follow stadius as being assumed to be accusative, functioning as, a, as an accusative in this case. And that just tells us it's... Uh, Within, it's not within the bounds of 10 states. It's uh, a state is a length of measurement. I think it's about 600 feet, but it's where we get our word stadium from. But it's it's for 10 states, right? It's for 10 states, or, and so that's distance, space, right? Or it's for uh, 10 days, right? 10 days. That means this action is unfolding over a distance of 10 states or it's unfolding over a distance of 10 days, right? So if this were going to be, if these words were, if stadius were gonna be accusative or excuse me, or dative, um, it wouldn't make sense because it would be like saying he's pursuing the enemy with 10 states. Um, which wouldn't make sense. He would he could pursue the enemy, say, with chariots in the dative, but you wouldn't pursue the enemy with states in the dative. So you're going to put it in the accusative to make sense that, oh, he's in the state of pursuit for 10 states, that is six stadiums, you if you will, right? Or excuse me, 10 stadiums, 600 feet each, right? For 10 states, 10 stadiums, right? Or he's going to pursue the enemy uh, for 10 days, not, right? So you use the accusative to do that because it's giving purpose and definition to the, the action there. So you can call that accusative extent or just try to understand that the accusative in its essence is like a stop sign to the action, to the verb. It's the limiting, not like preventing it, but it shows you to what extent that action is realized, if you will, right? So the pursuing is realized over the distance of 10, 10 states or of 10 days, right? So you put states and days in the accusative case. All right, I hope that makes sense. If you have questions or comments on that, put those in the comments below and I will get to those. All right, let's take a look at the vocab. But that's the lesson for today, pretty straightforward. All right, so vocabulary, let's see here. We've got a lot of words that are going to go from eta to alpha because of epsilon yota rho, the epsilon yota rho, rho rule, like agora. But everything else is going to be the same, right? So you have agora, the nominative form here with the genitive ending there. Zoom in a little bit for you. Okay, and you have your definite article, eta. Okay, just to be clear, the definite article is always going to be the same. Right, it's going to be the eta in the singular. He, tes, te, ten. That will always be as so, right? That doesn't change to an alpha, right? And then the plural is always going to be hi, ton, tais, tas, okay? The ending is the only thing that is going to vary here with the addition of epsilon, yota, rho. It shifts from that eta to alpha, all right? And have arche. Okay, this follows the old pattern of eta. Noun, right? Nominative with the genitive, then definite article. All right, deca is 10. Okay, so again, they, they don't provide you any other endings. Um, so it tells you it's not declinable. It only appears in this form. Okay, delta, epsilon, kappa, alpha there. All right, and then you have dia, which is a preposition. And then it, again, prepositions require a particular case ending. So with genitive, it means through. And then with an accusative, it means on account of, right? <clears throat> or because of, you could say. All right. 
So keep that in mind. And then you have an adjective here because you have avail it is available in the masculine, feminine, and neutered. Okay. And the, the feminine is alpha here, not eta, because you have a yota there. You have a yota there, right? The end of the word. Right? The OS is the masculine nominative ending, so that's going to drop off when it changes to a feminine. And it's going to be alpha because it's yota. Yota requires the alpha in place of the eta. And then your neuter ending on is going to be the same throughout. Okay. Uh, they give you the plural here and the neutered. It is provisions, right? Okay. We'll talk about <clears throat> that shift there. So we went from the word being an adjective to being a noun, from being fit, suitable, same word, but we've now made it a plural, neutered, to being a, a noun, okay? So let's look at the note they give us here, note number one, okay? Many Greek adjectives, when preceded by the article, are used as nouns. Compared with English, the blind, okay, the blind, um, a word to the wise, uh, and the Greek called polemioi, okay? So, all right, so let's see here. Nothing really unusual over here, okay? Make sure you're memorizing these and memorize them with the accent marks. All right, let's look at your homework here. Go ahead and translate this here. We're on paragraph 39, right? Exercises. So translate all this here. You want to complete the sentences here with the correct endings. We've done all this before. Routine work. And then finish up that section, completing the sentences here with the correct case endings. Okay. And then you want to write, translate, or interpret the, the English here into Greek, all right? All right, now let's go down. Typically, I have you stop there, but this part is really good. So look at paragraph 40 here and read through this, and then they have a very short exercise here, um, section B, they from the from Dikaios and Polemios construct the corresponding nouns, and then from Hippos and Agora construct the corresponding adjectives. Right, so read over that, and it, it may not make sense with me just saying it as that uh, right now, but read through that. It should make sense to you. I will go over this on the Patreon page for our subscribers, and I will provide the answers for all the exercises here. That oh, Excuse me. All the exercises here, I'll provide the answers for those, and that is on our Patreon page. The link for that is in the description box below. That is a $10 a month fee, and you get access to all the videos that explain and answer all the exercises um, for the chapters and lessons that we've covered thus far. So check that out if you're interested, if you need help on the exercises here, and um, I'm happy to provide that for you over on Patreon. All right, that is it for today, and um, pretty straightforward. I hope everything was pretty easy for you. And until next time, have a good week, and I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye.